the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago recently in a speech addressed the situation that is probably one of the most pressing issues here in Trinidad and Tobago. Crime. Violent crime in particular. Because if you look at all things considered, generally speaking, a lot of the other issues that many Trinidadians may think are a lot of our most pressing issues, if you look at it contextually, you know, comparing it, which, you know, they say comparison is what, the thief of joy, but you could still use comparison within a context and you watch and you see that in many other issues trinidad might not be that bad comparatively but in crime violent crime particularly it is legitimately a bad thing and the prime minister after you know he was away for a bit of time he came back and he had a he had a meeting with his cabinet and then he had a speech and he addressed crime and there was something very interesting i noticed about how he addressed crime and it was familiar in the present context because i've seen it spoken about in other contexts too especially since the pandemic and since the lockdowns of the pandemic i've seen multiple people speak about using the public health emergency style measures to to fulfill other goals to use it in other areas where they may think it is an emergency it's something that needs to be get to be done quickly and maybe in the present way it's being done it cannot be done as quickly as we need it so we'll send it through in an emergency context just the same way the pandemic allowed some of that power and personally i am a bit worried about that i spoke some about this last night in the live and according to if you were looking at the live or not you may have heard some of it but there was a little recording error in the live so well we're going to talk more about it now before we get into those stories, as per usual, hit that like button, drop a comment if you have something to say. It does help with the algorithm and all of that good stuff. Help the videos to go out there and be pushed to more people. So hit that like, hit that drop a comment there. Hit the subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed and you're looking and you're liking this kind of content and looking to see more of it. Please do hit that subscribe button. Share the video to people who may like this kind of content. See if you could strike up a conversation about something a little more in depth. <laughs> All right. PM, government to target the youths as violence deemed a public health concern. The Prime Minister says government will specifically target the nation's youth for action to prevent this vulnerable section of society from falling into a life of crime and criminality. That's not a problem. This, as Dr. Rowley said at a press conference on Monday, that the state is ready to deem violence a public health concern, warranting specific courses of action involving several arms of the government. Now, then is where I start to get slightly concerned. What do you mean specific courses of action and which arms of government? And why do you require it being seen as a public health concern for such a thing to happen i would think the present context we have the we have governance in we have law enforcement in i would have presumed that in the present context it can deal with crime and if in the present context with the current legal framework, framework we cannot deal with crime then i would think the people in charge of writing laws of writing legislation you know the legislators of whom the prime minister is chief I would suppose that they would go on and write some legislation that would be more effective in fighting crime and fighting this violent crime. If you tell me that you require to put it as a public health concern, the the image that conjures in my mind, it goes back to the public health concern that was COVID. And we saw the kind of power that the COVID public health concern gave. And Okay, some people might still say all of it was warranted, but still, by now, at least you could say whether it was warranted or not, we are seeing some of the consequences of it. We are seeing that we have a larger, a larger proportion of our youth population failing the exam. They write at around the age of 12, a larger proportion of them are failing it now. And you could criticize the exam if you want, but that shows something that a larger proportion was passing it two years ago and a large amount is feeling it now something happened so we, we, we can look there and see 
some of the consequences of the emergency action from the public health concern of COVID. So when you're talking about the public health concern of violent crime, what would some of those emergency actions be? That's something that would be very interesting to know. In addition to the issue of crime and violence, the PM also touched on the lifting of the public face mask mandate and the economy. The following is a brief overview of some of the key points. Crime. Rowley said his government's intention is to declare violent crime as a public health issue. And in so doing, there will be an operationalized response aimed at the youth population at various levels, including a line of education to steer young people away from crime and criminality. Now, I have no problem with that really and truly, at least from the surface sound of it there. My wonder is just, why do you need a public health concern to do this? If you're talking about focusing on youth and getting some operationalized structure to respond to focus on youth more, where does the public health concern requirement come in? I am just curious to know, like, okay, there's nothing wrong with renewing a focus on youth, and you can announce that as prime minister. That's in, within your policy framework, and many prime ministers do that very same thing. But the talk of public health concern, where does it come in? And as I said in the beginning, the reason some of these things raise a bit of concern is because you hear regularly these days talk about some people using climate change and saying climate change is now a public health concern. And with climate change being a public health concern, then that would mean the government and those that they are, that they partner with would have a lot more control over the economy because it's a public health concern. We require them to become in charge in that situation and then they will solve the problem. But even beside the fact that we are supposed to live in free countries, even beside that, there's the matter of whether we think they can solve it or not. Because... Are we to assume that given the limited power they have right now, the some of these problems are actually reversing and getting worse? The solution would be giving them more power and that somehow the trend would reverse and we would get better at it if we give them more power. Is that the assumption to be made? Or is there assumption, an assumption that can be made that there is some level of incompetence in and around governance that has to do with why some things aren't working that well. Here's what the Prime Minister said himself. He also said that the police have formed the conclusion that the upsurge in crime has been supported by shortcomings in on the part of the state with respect to issues such as legal, illegal quarrying. He said the state plans to take relevant action to curtail and eliminate this kind of facilitation. All right, so according to the Prime Minister, and he's saying that, from the commissioner of police these are two people that should be in the know about such issues according to them a lot of the upsurge recently in crime has to do with illegal land transactions and illegal quarrying and there's some evidence for this the the eastern division has been a hotspot recently when it comes to violent crime and the corporation in Sangre Grande, they had, I, I recently spoke about this in a live last week, they had, did agree that a lot of the crime in the area has to do with that land grabbing. Corporation boss, land grabbing, squatting, main cause of murders in Grande. Sangre Grande Regional Corporation Chairman Anil Jutaram is appealing to the police to implement brute force to eradicate criminals who are reportedly causing havoc in the region. And as he went on to complain about there, it isn't something that is strange, it isn't something Thing that is a mystery. People know what is going on. They are, they are people gr grabbing land, they want more land, and they are willing to kill for it. Up until recently, up until today, there was an allegation that a murder in the Arima district allegedly may have had a land involvement in it. So if such is the case, how is this continuing to go on for so long without anyone getting involved? The Prime Minister is saying, no, yes, the government is going to get involved in this and put a stop to this issue. But wasn't the government always involved in this? Isn't this a country where the state is in charge of a lot of the land? So if the government was always involved, how come the government didn't notice, didn't notice before or wasn't able to stop this at some point before? And that's an interesting question because there's a horror story out from Wallafield. Terra in Wallafield as gangsters threaten farmer off his land for illegal mining. 
Criminal elements continue to terrorize the farming community of Wallafiel as they threaten, assault, and chase farmers out of their properties to carry out illegal mining. This problem has been plaguing the area for several years, with allegations of police officers and criminals working hand-in-hand -hand to seize control of state lands occupied by farmers. And this story outlines a true horrific nightmare of a story going through the ordeal of a farmer named Balkisun and his family he had rights to this land dating from since 1977 a draft of a cabinet note dated june 28 1977 showed Balkisun's mother dolly Balkisun's dolly Balkisun applied for five acres of land down on that side so he has proof of this land being on his name, at least in his family line. But there is reportedly lucrative aggregate under the soil, under the little thin layer of soil that he uses to farm. There's lucrative gravel, red sand, etc., etc. And reportedly, there are some gangs, illegal gangs, associated with this illegal mining business, and they make a lot of money doing it. And they have to get you off of the land in order to get the stuff under your land and they are trying to force him off of this land now the scary stuff goes on and on here he has been shot at his 19 year old son was al well all of these are allegations obviously allegedly he was allegedly shot at his 19 year old son was allegedly kidnapped they're forcing him to not be able to cultivate his land and the problem in this to me though is where are the authorities in all of this? Because according to him, he has some thing, some mix up going on there, you know, trying to make sure he gets everything settled. But while he's waiting, he's being terrorized. He was offered twenty thousand dollars to vacate the premises. He turned it down, and since then he has been threatened over and over and over. Reportedly, at one point in time, fourteen armed men turned up, turned up to his doorstep and chased his daughters around his family home. This sounds like something out of a gangster movie in some other country where you know they, they don't have a functional government and they don't have a functional police service balki soon said the criminals have also been destroying his farm and crops first they started ripping down my fence and mashing down my crops they bring in heavy machinery and began banging the bucket of the baku on the ground to scare my animals scared of his animals caused one of his calves to break their neck they were reportedly going to poison his animals so he had to get rid of all of his animals he cannot plant anything and now because of all of this according to mr balkisun from operating a successful farm balkisun had to give up his livelihood as he was warned if he continues to cultivate the land he will feel the consequences he now works on other farms in the community to survive sometimes i would get 100 dollars for a half day of work i would work for two days for the week so i have to stretch that money like elastic yeah that's some heavy stuff the story goes in deeper you can check out the guardian terra in wallafield as gangsters threaten for farmer of his land you can check out that article if you want to get more in depth there but the part that sounds suspicious to me is even the guardian reached out to the commissioner of state lands well she was on vacation she sent them over to her chief secretary to her permanent secretary that permanent secretary promised to look into the matter Two weeks later, no answer. Mr. Balkisun says, as of right now, they have already dug up and started mining four of his nine acres. Tell me, how is it possible that people are excavating four acres out of your nine farming acres that are all supposed to be state land just by the way, and the commissioner of state land knows nothing about this? Do you think that you could hire an excavator and go find some acres of state land somewhere and just start digging it up and no one is going to notice and no one is going to tell you anything about it and then imagine in a case like this where a man is living on it he is reporting it to the police he is reporting it to the commissioner of state lands but according to him he cannot read and write so some of them are using that against him now when you look at a case like this you kind of have no choice but to wonder to wonder at least to, 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 to slide them out you have no choice but to wonder there might be some state or government involvement in this and if 
we are seeing according to the commissioner of police and the prime minister of trinidad and tobago that the upsurge in crime recently is pretty is pretty directly linked to these illegal land activities and we are seeing that these illegal land activities seem to be at least facilitated and protected by the state itself so now how am i to believe that the solution to this is giving the state more power. We declare the entire thing a public health emergency, a public health problem, you know, so they can get some more emergency powers. And then the same commissioner of state lands is, the same, is going to be the same commissioner of state lands. And remember, they would be essential workers. That entire, organi that entire group would be essential workers. So they would be working regardless, ensuring that whatever their job is would always be done. Is that something that you think would be more of a solution to crime? But who knows? Who knows? Maybe the Prime Minister doesn't have intention of any more power to the government as this public health concern business. It's just a new phrasing of it. Who knows? Maybe as he gets deeper into it and he explains more, we would find out. I await hearing more. Tell me what you think. That's all I have for now. Drop a comment and tell me what you think about all of this. I hope you are educated, informed, or entertained, and I will see you later.